afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Lakeshore Chamber meeting today. I appreciate everyone coming out to St. Catherine's Hospital today for the meeting. I'd like to uh, take some time real quick to recognize our ambassadors that helped out with the meeting. Uh, Sandra Sigler from People's Bank helped out with registration today. Patricia Macarunis from Regional Federal Credit Union. And Caleb Walma from BMO Harris were our greeters. Rachel Lentz from People's Bank collected our business cards today. Uh, I'm your resident photographer for the day. And uh, Patricia also um, brought our door prize for today. I'm going to hand it over now to my co-chair, Sandy Sigler, and uh, she will take it from there. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Um, again, I'm Sandy Sigler from People's Bank, and um, I'm the co-chair of the Ambassador Committee. But today I'm going to step into different shoes and help out our chair of our Small Business Referral Committee and help with the Business Person of the Month. Our business person of the month volunteers his time at Sir Jorner Truth House and Gary and many other charitable organizations. He has gone overseas on several mission trips. He recently purchased a building in Hammond and is very dedicated to his customers. Our business person of the month is Mike Anderson from Snow and Ice Pros. And at this time, if we could all turn off our cell phones, or turn them down. And I'd like to hand it over to Dave Ryan. If you're wondering why uh, Mike Anderson's smiling, he's in the snow removal business. And uh, last year was a record year for Mike. Not for us, Mike, but you and Nipsco did OK. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce the chairman of the St. Catherine Hospital, Joanne Birdzell, who'd like to welcome this audacious group. <laughs> Joanne. Thank you, welcome, everybody. And we have the board chairman here. Will you hold up your hand, Joe Costanza, and his wife, Aurelia? So we all three are going to be welcoming you on behalf of the board of directors at St. Catherine Hospital. And it took you 87 years to get here. So we're very happy and very thankful to Dave and to Jeff for allowing this to happen. I think this is a good thing and it's nice for us too. We have a kids table over there in case it was an overflow so if any other stragglers come in we're okay. And I want you to know that this is a very happy hospital and if you didn't see the, the video what we're going to tell you we are very happy and it's true we have a very happy hospital. It's sort of like a family. And when anyone comes in here, a patient or anyone, that's what they will say. And the hospital I want you to, to know, since I have the floor a little bit, is that we have, over time, these 87 years, we've won several awards. Awards for safety, awards for quality care, and one of the most recent ones was an excellence award from Health Grades. And you know all about Health Grades because you see that in the billboards and so forth. But it had to do with cardiac services. So open heart, bypass, life-saving inter interventions, valve surgery, and so on. And so we're very, very pleased with that. And we're also considered a mentor hospital for the state of Indiana, so that if hospitals have difficulty with quality or safety issues, they call upon us and we either make a trip or they come here or we talk it through on the phone. So we're very pleased and proud of that, too. And a few things I want to remind everybody of. I don't think you were here 87 years ago, but... This hospital was a first, has lots of first things that have happened to it over time. And today is the first for the, the, the chamber being here, so that's, we'll add that to the list of first. But we were the first hospital in Lake County to take care of polio patients. That was in 1939. So you may know somebody that has some of that go on and so forth, but this was the originating hospital to take care of those patients. We were first in cardiac cath procedures. That was January of 1961. We did the first open heart here in June of 1963. And uh, that was quite an event and have been very strong in cardiac surgery ever since. We worked with Cleveland Clinic. We worked with the University of Chicago to make sure that we did coronary angiography here for the first in Northwest Indiana. 
cardiac bypasses. And if anyone remembers Dr. Aaron, he did uh, orthopod. He did the first hip replacement in, in Northwest Indiana in 1971. So we have lots of firsts. We have a hand, hand center, and that was the first in Northwest Indiana. And that was Dr. Richter, and he's still here in 1994. So hospital has a lot of firsts, and we're glad to add you to the first. It's very nice, very warm. It's going to be a little warm here, so we'll talk fast. But thank you very, very much for coming. Uh, among the many firsts that St. Catherine has, excuse me, is the uh, first shrimp cocktail we've ever had at one of our lunches. <laughs> Chef Bill and Leela and staff, thank you very much. Great job. Let's give them a big hand. They eat like this every day here. So, uh, I want to thank Joanne Birdzell, um, our chairman, uh, Mr. Costanza and his lovely bride, and uh, Donna and Jennifer. All the uh, hosts that we have for today are, are thank you to St. Catherine. Um, we're very fortunate to have a, a, a hospital of this caliber in East Chicago and Northwest Indiana. And the investments that they've made in this hospital in the past few years certainly stand out. And uh, they are a, really a stalwart and part of the community hospital organization. Um, it's great to see Mayor Copeland. He will be here, by the way. Mayor Copeland's coming along with Val Gomez. I see several city council members. I see uh, Ivy Tech. I see the uh, uh, East Chicago Education Foundation. Russ Taylor is here with the um, school board. Um, Jesse Gomez, the president of the school board, who has worked hourless, hours, not hourless, hours, on uh, securing a uh, strong new driver for the East School uh, system. Today is a big day for not only the Lakeshore Chamber, but also for the school city of East Chicago, as we get the opportunity to meet and greet the new superintendent of schools. Our new superintendent has Hoosier roots, as he attended both Manchester College for his BS, University of Notre Dame for a Master of Science degree. He obtained his doctor uh, degree at uh, Toledo University and also his postdoctorate at Michigan State University. This man is well schooled. Jesse Gomez, president of the East Chicago School Board, has made a point to introduce our new superintendent to a variety of key individuals throughout East Chicago and Northwest Indiana. And we have had the occasion to dine with him on several occasions. You will like what he has to say about his thoughts on education, his plans for East Chicago schools, and particularly for our students. Unfortunately, he is a Cub fan. <laughs> we will not let that stand in his way. As he... <laughs> the rest of you can leave also. <laughs> but we will not let that stand in his way as he prepares for the coming school year. After all, there's always next year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to new superintendent of the East Chicago School System, Dr. Yusef Yantu, also known as Dr. Joe. Please give a warm welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, East Chicago got, also got a first. I think they got the only first Persian Jew superintendent in the state of Indiana. It's really a pleasure to be here. Can you hear me back there? Is, <clears throat> Mayor, we could have room for you here anywhere you like to. Um, it's really a pleasure be, to be here. And you know, I wasn't born as a superintendent. I was born as, like most of you have, and I grew up and I decided to become a teacher. So there is some teaching still in me. So today I want to just take a couple of minutes, and anytime I have a chance, make sure I teach something to the audience. So you got to participate. Now, my last name is very simple. You have two syllabus. The first part is Y-O-M. And that pronounces? Yeah. Yeah. I think if I was talking to kindergarten the student, they would do a better job. <laughs> Y-O-M? Yeah. T-O-O-B? Two. Together? Yeah. yeah two. One more time. Yeah. Two. We just learned Hebrew. <laughs> Easy. 
Yam means day. Tu means good. Yam tu means good day. You never forget that. If you don't learn anything else today, you remember my name is Yam tu, which means good day. What I want to do today is talk about myself a little bit, talk about my experience, and talk about our vision for East Chicago School. I was born and raised in Iran. As I, I told you, I was Jewish. My father, who was orphan, could not go to a school because he was Jewish. So he went to a Muslim school, standing outside, looking at the window, looking at alphabet and numbers, and learned maybe a couple of grades. But education became his passion. And one of the reasons I'm still here is because of his passion in education. He was very, very successful businessman, <clears throat> even though he was orphan and not well educated. But he spent 75% of his time for the people who needed him and 25% of his time for his family. I came to this country in 1958. He encouraged us to come. I was the first in my family to go to college. And when I came here, I want to just share one small story with you. I was registered to go to NYU to learn English. So I'm trying to be proactive because I was so smart I studied French. <laughs> Made a lot of sense. Uh, so so I, I was going to anticipate what they're going to ask me, because they know English. So I said one of the questions they asked, what's your name? And the other one is probably, how old are you? And when, when did you arrive here? So I said, rather than, rather than learning the name of the, in the days, when, whatever he say, I'm going to say yesterday. So I went to dictionary. I went to dictionary and looked up the word in Persia, what yesterday was. I said, while well, I'm learning that, let me learn what the other word is, tomorrow. So I learned yesterday and tomorrow. So I go there. The first question he asked me, what's your name? How old are you? I was 100% hitting the bat there. So he says, when did you arrive to the United States? I was so excited. I said, tomorrow. <laughs> it was tough. After six weeks of learning English, going to college, I had challenges. So that's why I understand some of our kids to come to challenges. What I also have learned long, long time ago, that God doesn't create junk kids. I consider all of our kids gifted. I know they are not the richest group of people we have in East Chicago, but they're all gifted kids. And that would be my attitude for future. My experience after <clears throat> 10, 11 years of um, uh, uh, teaching mathematics, and I think I was very successful. And if you have time, I'm going to teach a math lesson somewhere along the line. Um, I was very successful, and uh, I went got my PhD, and um, they felt I was able to do other things than the teaching, which I don't think that's the appropriate thing because we need good teacher in the classroom. Anyway, I went to the central district office and became probably the youngest administrator they had. I became federal project director, research evaluation, eventually became assistant superintendent. During the course of that year in Niles, Michigan, which I was 22 years, I was very fortunate to meet a group of people who had the same thinking that I have now. I didn't have it at that time. This group believed, no matter who the kids are and where do they come from, they could learn as much as anybody else. They had proof that the school system with 90% poor, 90% minority, 90% student achievement. Of course, I didn't believe it. I said, how do they know about this? And they're not in my classroom, but I, I became a believer. And that has shaped my educational life. I went to a school system in Michigan, which had three buildings. I'm just sharing some of my experiences. And one of the buildings was in Project. One was, they call it Country Club, and one was in the 
good solid middle, uh, middle, uh, middle uh, class school system. When the score came from the project school, I looked at it, and only 51.6% of the kids have achieved the acceptable level because they were black, they were Hispanic, and they were poor. So I asked the building principal to come for a conference with me, and I showed the score to the building principal, and she said something which I recognized what the problem was. She says, what's wrong with this? <laughs> I, I need to ask that question, not you. <laughs> I said, uh, what are you planning to do? She says, I'm going to do, 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 do this, that. I said, what did you do last year? You did the, the same thing. I said, you know, I'm not a rocket scientist. But I remember looking at last year's score, and that was 51.6. So 51.6 last year, you did all this good thing, 51.6 again. Do you think what you're doing is working? Well, you're trying to get rid of me. I was brand new there, by the way. And I, I was dumb enough to challenge her. She was a hometown person who went to an elementary school there, went to high school, went to the college in town, got become a teacher, eventually became principal. Good thing I didn't know all those things. I, I would have done the same thing. So I told a different group together, and we're going to talk. I was brand new in that school system. So the people came together and I put the numbers on the board. Uh, they said, what's wrong with our number? I said, well, this is not acceptable to your assistant superintendent. But you don't know our kids. I said, I do not know your kids, but I know God doesn't create any junk. Your kids are as good as anybody else. They jumped all over me. I think they were thinking themselves that this guy with foreign accent, who think with accent, is going to come and tell us what to do. We are native here. So they were looking at me like funny things. So the first hour I didn't accomplish much. We met again with them. We talked about other things. They still challenged me. You don't understand our kids. You don't know what's this. I didn't give up. So one teacher finally said, Maybe we should look the way we teach. I said, God bless America, yes. <laughs> that, created, that created an atmosphere. I said, I support you financially. I support you knowledge-wise. But you got to write the plan. Next year, we change the building principle. You got to change the leader. You know, the leader who does the same thing, get the same thing back and surprise, there's no leader. And we, we, we do very well on that. Everybody wants to improve, but nobody wants to change. It happens in every organization. So next year, result came in. I went to school in a, in a project school, 86.9, 86.9, 30 points improvement. I was excited. I looked at the district average. The meter didn't move. I was ready to call the State Department of Education in Michigan and tell them, you guys goofed up. <laughs> we improved 30 points. We have three building. More or less average should be what? 10, po 10 points increase? I said, but let me check the other school. I had transferred that principal to country club school. <laughs> and what happened country club? It crashed, <laughs> even from 89 to 60 something. We gained 30 points here, we lost 30 points. And my last year there, before I became superintendent, this is honest truth, 100% of those kids, of project kids, black kids, Hispanic kids, poor kids, who were not supposed to accomplish anything, they succeeded, 100%. <laughs> I have tried many times to have good practices, but they do not become institutionalized. After you leave, somebody else come and they want to have a four corner like dogs. You know what dogs do, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to kill your appetite. <laughs> uh, they do that, but somehow that stayed there. And several years later, when I went and checked, 
they were still doing good. But that was all about the student. The teacher were flying. You walk in that building, the teacher were walking in the air. Success beats success. I went to another school district in Michigan. In the eastern part of Michigan, they used to call it Little Detroit. About 80, 70, 20 percent minority, mostly Afro-American, and the 20 percent were um, uh, Southern Baptists who came there for the job for the fourth plan when they were building 24 bombers. Uh, and they hired a Persian Jewish superintendent. It was very diverse. By the way, he, he made a good choice. <laughs> Who was complimenting him? They was complimenting him. You did a great job. I'm just kidding. I'm going to tell you why I'm here in a minute. Well, I went to negotiate my contract. I said, how much money are you going to save They were broke. I said, give me whatever you want to give me. Now, at that time, I had family, two kids in college. This I could afford, whatever they give me, I accept them. But those, anyway, I accepted that. But we did well. They were, they were, the budget was about 50,000 in deficit. Their score was the lowest in the county. Our reputation was the worst in the county. And the first year, collaborating with the teachers, having high standard, believing in the kids, the first year our score went up about 19%. And every year since, about 15, 20 percent a year. When I left them, I left them three and a half million dollar fund balance. So why am I here and what can I do for our kids here? I really cannot answer that question because you won't believe me if I tell you. For the last five, I retired three times. <laughs> So for the last five years, I was really enjoying myself. I worked a little bit, but last two years, we bought, it, we bought a house in Arizona. Last four, the last year, four months, when you people were so happy with your 20 below, 18 below, I was, I was riding in a convertible with 75 degrees. I called one of my buddy. I was at McDonald's having a Diet Coke. He says, yeah, I'm going to have hot chocolate here. <laughs> So life was good to me. I wasn't bored. I, my wife and I have celebrated our 52 second anniversary. We are we have blessed with a good family. So why am I here? This particular Thursday night, this is true story. You don't want to believe it, don't believe it. I don't believe in a higher power. I'm not very religious, but I got to tell you what happened. This Thursday night, around the end of <clears throat> April, I'm about 11 o'clock, I'm playing with my computer watching news. I said, never have done that in five years. I said, let me see what's open in Indiana. If you ask me what website, honest to God, I can't tell you. I, I don't know what I have. I went to this website, it's Chicago. Well, I don't know much about this Chicago, but I know about this Chicago. East Chicago, North Chicago, Chicago, Height. <laughs> you, you, you have idea. Where I was twice before, I have some idea. I wasn't confident, but I said, that's my kind of person. Now, I always have said to myself, before I go to the other world, I want to take a school system which have challenges. Because I know, in my heart, working with the staff, working with the community, you could turn it around. There is enough research to show that. I had personal practice. So I said, let me look at the deadline. Now, you know, it's hard to, I can't believe it myself. The deadline says 4.15. I said, oh, I got May 15. I mean, I know numbers. I know 4 is in April. <laughs> May 15, I got 15 days. Now, if, I, if that wouldn't happen, I wouldn't apply. I wouldn't even call. So I called. Well, we're still not asking application. So the rest is history. I'm here for one and only one reason, to help our kids to help our school, using somebody else's word, to build a new East Chicago. Now, how are we going to do that? <laughs> I, I have not met many kids yet, but I know, I know kids. With positive leadership, with caring teacher, 
with high expectation, you're going to get there. I met with my administrative team yesterday. I said, we need to pretend that all of our, these kids coming from a millionaire house, all of our kids come from a house that they value education. If we look down at them, if we give up on them, if we tell these kids come from project, if they say they are poor, they're going to be with gang, you know what we get? We get what we expect to get, the same thing. If we tell the kids can learn, they will learn. There's enough research in the world to show that. It's not a surprise. But we have to work differently. We were looking at our score yesterday. It's not something that we could brag about, <coughs> saying it nicely and politically correct. <laughs> I said, if we keep doing the same thing, that's what we get. And at age 75, that ain't what I want. <laughs> I want my life. I, I, will, I got a good life, folks. I'm not bragging, but I have a good life. I'm here to make sure we make drastic changes in order to do that. And my administrative team promised me they would, they would come on board, and every one of them are willing to do that. So we're going to do that. Now, in order to do that, we have to re-educate re ourselves. We have to rethink. Re we cannot accept failure as an as a alternative. And we can give up on the kids. Now, for high school, we have some new ideas we want to share with them. I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, uh, International Baccalaureate. That's, that's a very high level. People who don't know, it started in Switzerland. This was for um, ambassador kids and sons. And, and I remember my Shah, king of Iran, when I got educated in, in Switzerland in one of those schools. Very high level thinking. It doesn't happen overnight. And I won't do it until I got staff to be able to do it and work with me. I'm not going to impose anything from top down. I'm going to impose high expectation. There is another, uh, maybe you haven't heard it, but there is another um, thing that I, I have tried it and worked for us called New Tech. That's project-based education. You practice what you learn. You make model of what you learn. You get a problem, and you solve the problem by using your mathematics, and you don't know enough mathematics, you get more mathematics. You get more science. You, you do more English. Those are the two things to do. Our mission statement is very simple. Now, when they interviewed me, I said, how many of you know your mission statement? They didn't. I, I don't blame them. I read it 15 times. I couldn't remember one word. <laughs> How fluffy word didn't mean anything. We have a simple mission statement. Learning for all, whatever it takes. Learning for all. Would you repeat that? Make me happy. <laughs> whatever it takes. All right. And our vision, I'm paraphrasing it, uh, we, we came up with good vision. Our vision is anybody graduate from East Chicago is prepared to go to any college they want to or any career path they want to. And we're going to accomplish this. Now, I need a lot of help from you folks. I don't know if you know or written the paper, financially, <clears throat> we are not very, very high. We've got a lot of problems. So we'll be calling on you. We need partners. We need partners to help us for uh, field trips. We need partners to, um, um, you will see, we have a tape to show you. And by the way, in this tape, just watch carefully. There is a very famous movie star you may recognize. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> and we need partners to accomplish this. Yesterday we showed this tape to my administrative team. This was done in high school, but we were expanding in middle school. And some of my LND principals said, why not us? Anybody wants to do it, we do it. How am I doing on time? All right. Since I'm going with time, uh, I, I, I told you if you have time, I want to teach you a lesson. Now, you already learned Hebrew, right? <laughs> Did you learn Hebrew? Yes. yes. Yom Tov means? I'm going to teach math. Now, you know, you know your multiplication tables? Yeah. Eight times five? Four. Six times nine? Four. You know your tens? Ten times seven? Seven. Ten times nine? Nine. You know your elevens? Eleven times six? 
Eleven times nine? Ninety-nine. Eleven times twenty-six? <laughs> That's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right, eleven times twenty-six. The answer is two eighty-six. Now, close your eyes. Imagine your brain is a chalkboard. Twenty-six times eleven. One times six is six, one times two is two. You put a zero here, one times six is six, one times two. You draw a line, zero and six is six, two and six is eight, and you bring the two down. The answer is 286. So, 26 times 11. The first number is two, is the same two as 26. The last number is six, is the same as 26. So you know the first number, you know the last number. How do you get the middle number? Come on. Kindergarten could answer that better. Come on. You do what? Add them. Add two and six, you get eight. All right, let's practice. 35 times 11. 300? 80? What? You are slow. One more. 44 times 11. 484. Together. 484. All right. This one you have to think, and then we show you the tape. This one you have to think. 78 times 11. I say it's hard. You have to think. 78 times 11. 858. 858. 858. You put 7, you put 8, add them together. You don't put 15, you put the 5, carry the 1. 850. I'm going to call on you people. I got a, I got a smart board president. No, he already knew that. I taught him. Actually, the night they interviewed me, I taught, I taught him a couple of lessons. I taught him my name and that. So I taught him how to do it. No, I'm just but, but also I have to say one more thing. I cannot be successful without your support with a total board support because I'm an innovative person and I don't want obstacle. I want my administrator who are here to know. <clears throat> I'm cheerleaders for you guys and remove obstacle. People who keep asking questions, why are you doing this, why are you doing that, I have better life to go. Now, you know I got five-year contract. Did you read that in the paper? We haven't signed it just yet. We could, we could change our mind. Tonight, so, but I also got two weeks' notice. I don't want the school to be burdened with a person who don't want. I don't want to work somewhere that I'm not wanted. So it's, as a matter of fact, if they give me, tell me right now, go home, my wife would be the happier lady in the world. I just jump in the car and go home. But this is there to show that I'm very confident what we're going to do for our kids. And the only reason I'm here, I'm not going to play politics with anybody, I'm not going to horse trade with anybody. The only reason I'm here for the kids, I'm too old to do any of those things. Thank you very much. I'm going to call on you. God bless you. Show them the tape and we answer your question. Now watch for the movie starring that show. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's it. Help. 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 Where now we would have to say how many volume? The suspension rate for violent suspensions was probably among the highest in the metropolitan Detroit region. Currently we're forty two percent below one year ago for violent suspension. One for the Renaissance program. I may have moved on to another high school because I was at that point where you know, just the daily status quo was not satisfying to me as a, as a career person, so I'm real excited about it. The kids are just more focused into doing stuff involved with the school and for the school and trying to be proud of the school. And it's great. I'm a graduate from here and I really enjoy seeing it. We see students here who in the past wouldn't, wouldn't even try, wouldn't even bother coming. 
uh, and now they want to be here. They have a purpose. Uh, achievement is up. Test scores are up. And that's something I think we all tend to look at. But more importantly, behavior uh, is improving. Uh, dropout rates are down. Kids come willingly to school. And that's, and, that's, and that's a real fun thing to see kids eager to get here in the morning. This year has been one of the best school years for me. 26 years of And one of these in the In June 1989, Willow Run Assistant Principal Tom Evans was chosen to attend a Renaissance educational conference. It gave him a new perspective. It was really a refreshing experience last year and it kind of uh, rejuvenated me to think differently, to begin to use the principles that I had from business to think, begin to think about the school as a business. In business, we use incentives for meeting your goals, meeting your objectives. And in education, let's think about it for a student. There's a report card. And the report card may come home every six or nine weeks. And a parent may not even look at it. So what is in there for the student? There needs to be more. Now at Willow Run, there is more. Formal recognition as well as valued privileges conferred through color-coded ID cards. Gold for A students, red for B students, white for students with no failing grades. The gold card holder, one of the things we do for them is give them a reserved parking place, and they love that. Cardholder privileges extend beyond the school into the community. The benefits, say, of walking into a McDonald's and, and receiving a free sandwich, that means something. But more so the fact that it's going out in the community, flashing the card in front of everyone that's there and saying, hey, I'm entitled. I win. There's been a very, very positive effect for both McDonald's and for the school system. So we're pleased with it. I mean, I look at it, it could be one of my kids there, you know, in the school. And, uh, you know, nowadays there's so many things out there to mislead kids, and this is something positive to really to draw the kids in the right direction. People are working harder because they know they're going to get something. Besides feeling, you know, good about their, themselves and their grades, they're also getting a little extra. To do a little more to, like, uh, get another A to get a gold card. Sometimes you get lazy and you don't do it. But lately, I've been trying. Why is that? Because I want a gold card. <laughs> our goal is that 100% of our kids be card holder. That means nobody fails. Ideas for improving academic achievement, like the cards, are constantly being generated at Renaissance schools throughout the country. Renaissance provides the network to share them and the skills training necessary to put them to use. We've had resource people come out from, from Minneapolis and share with us those concepts that are so effective for organizational development. And then you want to brainstorm the drivers, which of course is going this direction. I can come up with a good idea, but if I don't have a built-in support system or a program that's standing behind me with some momentum, yes, some capital, financial assistance, uh, it's going to take me ten times longer. Educators are really isolated, reinvent the wheel over and over again. Whereas with Renaissance, we have that ability now through the toll-free network and the resources given to us to share uh, those ideas and build upon it. There are ideas for encouraging attendance, ideas for providing professional recognition for teachers, ideas for increasing community support. Uh, if you call that hotline, they'll link you up with people who have already done it. More ideas are shared. More people become involved. Success is contagious. The atmosphere turns from confrontation to commitment. A commitment to excellence in education. The bottom line is achievement. This program provides the resources, the network that helps you get there. The ultimate objective, having students perform in the classroom, being an acceptable employee when they come out, being a performer, being able to accomplish something when they get that diploma and walk across the stage. That's what, that, that's what Renaissance is all about. If you really want to help kids, not two, five, ten years from now, but next school year, this program can, can honestly assist that. And if they would just see 
look on Kids Face and we hand them the gold card or the red card with their picture on it, or they go into a store and, and they say, hey, I got it from Willow Run with a gold card. It's worth every investment of time and, and um, incentive program the high school or anybody else can come up with. When I got the um, white card, it made me want to do better to try to get to the red card, and now I got the red card, I want to get the gold card. I'm trying. I think I'm going to make it. I think so, too. Thank you. If I could fly like an eagle you are rushing. I'm looking for first business is going to be sponsoring my gold card. <laughs> and I have my <clears throat> business card outside with my phone number. I'm serious about that one. Please take one and, and talk to me. And I think I have all of their numbers. So you gave me a... Uh, this program made it in Wall Street Journal first page from a school district that nobody was paying attention and everybody was me worried, were worried for me to go there. And we were, we had a segment in CNN. So we became very, very, very positive. Help our kids. Uh, answer a question if they have any. I'm sure they don't because I answer all of their questions before they ask. But <laughs> in case you have any questions. Yes. Hi, I'm Joyce Dix from Robertson Child Development Center Daycare Program here in East Chicago. What, what, where do you see early childhood education? Oh, you, 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 you put my heart in there. <laughs> I think we should go even before that, when the parents are expecting. Yes. Seriously. Yes. I was actually going to talk to our um, foundation, see if they would sponsor hiring some group of people. How to implement the best first class preschool system from age zero to age five. The best, the one that you want to send your kids there. I'm not talking about the storefront. I'm talking top class. When we take care of them at that time, we don't have to remediate anymore. We don't have dropout problem. We put our money in the wrong place. Have to start from age zero, even before that. So take care of mom, nourishment, and all those things, and that will solve most of our problem. You said the right answer? Right answer. All right. <laughs> Any other questions? I've been promoting that all my life. Universal preschool, top universal preschool. But not everybody accepts that. But that's it. Anything else? You know, no need. Question here, Doctor. Oh, yes. I didn't get to hear a lot because I was out working registration. But what is your plan, and maybe you talked about it, sorry guys. What is your plan to get the parents involved? I answer it, I answer it two ways. Okay. One, we know it's very difficult to get parents involved. We will do our best. There are a lot of community liaison. But I want to also tell you, regardless of that, we're going to move forward. We are not going to use parents as excuse because we can't afford it. They're very challenging. This is challenging of my last 50 years. Always when I had parent teacher conferences, guess who came? Our A student, our AB student, the one you want to see, they don't even come. So it's been challenged. So you have to keep that, you don't have to give up on them, but you know, they get involved when they see their kids are learning. They get involved when you, they see that you really care for the kids. Yeah, uh, uh, the three board member came to my last school to make sure I was genuine. I mean, they, they, they could check my background, no, that's okay. I was teaching, I was a superintendent at Hawthorne Elementary School in Vernon Hills, Illinois. I don't know if you know where that is, in Lake County. Average price houses, 350, 400,000. And when I went there, the average student achievement was about 75, 77. And they were happy with that. Our, our, our low, SES, low, low, uh, free and reduced lunch was about 11, 12%. 
So 13 years later, when we left, the SES, the people who are poor and feeling reduced lunch, went from 11 to 20 percent to 22 percent. And usually there is a correlation. When that goes up, the score comes down. Our student achievement was 94 percent. When I reflect what I did in 13 years, that's the thing I'm most proud of. So regardless of where they are, who they are, we got to do it. They rely on us. I was telling the story, they came to visit, and I think Jess or the other member asked, what can we tell our community about Dr. Joe? And what did they say? <laughs> said, I asked the question, uh, so what do we tell our community about Dr. Joe? And uh, I think it was the superintendent uh, that answered the question. He said, um, tell him, um, it was the principal of the elementary school. She said, tell him that he will care, that Dr. Joe will care for every one of your children. And that's what we do. And that's what I expect all of my teachers do, all of my administrators do. Anything else? Dr. Joe, I have a question. Sure. This is the business community here, and educators and so forth. What is a type of sponsorship you're looking for? I am, <clears throat> I'm going to be looking high. <clears throat> I want somebody, uh, it's not somebody, I want most of the businesses help us for Renaissance program. Offer us something for our parents. I don't know if you have a dentist here or not, but we had orthodontist in Detroit area that somebody had a gold card get 30% discount. So anything we can do to help that come true. Also, seriously, I want all of our kids to be able to go to college they choose and if they cannot afford it, I like us as a business to provide them a scholarship. And I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to announce today that I'm going to donate 5% of my salary to a foundation that my, my son's name is on it called David Young to Most Improved Foundation. And I'm going to donate 5% of my salary as soon as I get my contract. I haven't got my contract. <laughs> but, and that is that every kid in elementary and middle school is going to receive $100 scholarship as a deposit for a saving account for downtown books. I mean, books are so expensive. You need, anyway, $100 each person, and the most uh, improved senior would get $500 scholarship. And if that person keep 3.5 or 3 or above, would get it for four years. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I hope you do the same thing. My boss, my wife, she says, go ahead and say it. <laughs> yes, sir. What are your thoughts on high school and college based dual credit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why not? Why not? You know, we are still working with um, uh, industrial based ma ma uh, mentality kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Someday, if Carnegie goes out of business, we'll be able to tell the kids, these are what we expect you to do. When you do it, you do the next thing. When you do it, you do the next thing. Some kids may take 16 years, some may 14 years, some 13 years, but you have to have Carnegie unit to go to college. If you don't have it in your transcript, you won't get in there. <laughs> Who cares? But anyway, I believe that. I think that's great to have partnership with any kind of institution to have dual credit. I don't know. I think we have some of them. But I, I'm not Oh, this, this is my fourth week. One week I was in hospital. I'm glad. By the way, I'm very happy that you're a good place for a heart. Because I had a heart surgery here. And I'm worried about my wife was worried about sending me to work. So what happened if something happened to your heart? I tell him I go to St. Catherine Hospital. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Dr. Joe, you had, I'm sorry, you had mentioned uh, about kids and, and what that does for the kids. As Dave mentioned, this is a business community. What does, it do, what does an improved educational system do for a community? Oh, what good educational system? Yes. Do for community? 
price of the houses would go up, the people moving, they won't leave, we won't have dropout, hopefully the gang problem would decrease. I tell you, when I went to that school system in East, in, uh, east of, uh, actually it was west of Detroit, I made a true pronouncement, dumber than heck, but I did it anyway. I made the newspaper, I said, next, next time you see the result, our score goes up. And he looked at me like I was, I was on drug. I said, what is this? He said, you don't know the community. He felt sorry for me, even he bought the lunch for me. <laughs> then I talked, to my, I talked to my faculty the first time. I said, you know, I'm going to move in this community because I was living far away. I'm going to build a house here. And by the time I finish, we're going to double, our price of, double the price of our houses. Look at me. OK, I said that. Well, next year, after the test result came, I went to the developer who was, had all the land. Now, the houses was about, about 70, 80,000. I said, well, superintendent moving in, maybe they give me about 5,000 discount, <laughs> 65,000, 70. So I said, I want this house. 120,000. I said, excuse me? Last year it was 80,000. Well, don't you know our test score has gone up? I said, do you know who's responsible? So, yes, the price of the houses would be. You had a question there. I was wondering if you're going to make a sequel to your movie here in East Chicago. We hope so. We hope so. Why not? Why not? I, I look a little bit older, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. Support us, please. I think you'll agree that uh, Dr. Yung too is very contagious. And uh, Jesse promised that, you know, when he told us, um, you know, how this all took place. It was a pretty lengthy process. But, uh, Dr. You put your money where your mouth is. I see a lot of money in this room, by the way. Uh, doctor has the, our new directory, which has all your names in it, all your emails. And uh, he paid dearly for that because he sits on our board now. So, um, Pleasure. Learning for all, whatever it takes. Is that right, Doc? That's great. Everybody repeat that. Learning, learning for all, all whatever, whatever it takes. takes. Um, Doc, thank you. Very great presentation. We appreciate it. Thank you. I want to thank Angela. Where's Angela? Raise your hand, Angela. <laughs> and of course, her boss, Joanne Burzell, and her staff for putting on a great performance today. Thank you. I, I have one more comment. I think Dave was a little bit nervous what I would say and how I would do. I could tell. <laughs> because he want to meet with us, see what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> That's okay, Dave. <laughs> we met many times. <laughs> um, anyway, August 29th is our next chamber event. It's uh, Sox versus the Tigers, the, who are about ready to take it in the first place, by the way, unlike the Cubs. And, uh, <laughs> Doc, you're invited to you come with us. All right. You can bring the school board, as long as you buy tickets, of course. <laughs> but uh, thank all of you for coming. It was a great event, and we look forward to a nice school year. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks for coming. <laughs>